I have an important message for you, beloved, on a topic that is desperately needed right now. And that topic is discernment. There are so many voices out there. Which one is the right voice? Who should I listen to? Who's even telling the truth? God, what are you saying right now? First Chronicles 12, 32 refers to a people known as the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel should do. So I'm going to share some keys to ponder in this time. First of all, in James, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And the first place of drawing near to God is through the word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says the word is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. It's the word of God. Through that relationship with the word that we're able to sharpen our discernment, even as it deals with the things in our soul that hinder the Holy Spirit's working in our hearts and in our lives. So as we spend more and more time in the word, a natural byproduct is a greater level of discernment because of the work of the word of God, dividing the soul, what the, the Greek word would be, the, the, the idea of the sarks, this, this fleshly nature that is trying to rule our thinking, but actually can quench or make it harder to hear what the Lord is saying by the Spirit of God. So spending time in the Word becomes very important and critical to sharpen our discernment. Next, we must guard our eye and our ear gates. Psalm 101.3 says, I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. And I'll tell you, if you think about that scripture, how much opportunity do we have every day to put things before our eyes that fall into this category? Work with the Lord on that question. But Philippians 4 says we are to meditate on things that are pure, lovely, of good report, virtuous, and praiseworthy. And so as we're spending time stewarding our heart, stewarding what goes into our eyes and what we listen to, we're going to be able to increase our sensitivity to what the Lord is really saying and not get pulled into things that are off and miss the mark. What else can we do to sharpen our discernment? Let's guard against the leaven of Herod or what I would call the political spirit. You know, we're in a very interesting time. What's going on with Israel and Palestine deeply grieves my heart. And we, we've been praying for Israel for years. I love the Jewish people. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Paul had a great heart for Israel and the scriptures where he was willing to give his up for his entire salvation so that Israel would be saved. That's the heart of Jesus. But my love for Israel ought not translate into a hatred of the Palestinian people. Yes, what Hamas has done is deeply troubling, and Israel has the right to respond based on their, the government does not bear the sword in vain, according to Scripture. But that doesn't mean I allow my love for Israel to get co-opt into a hatred for a people group that Jesus gave his own life for. Scripture says in Galatians 3, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You see, as believers... We lose the right to start drawing, excuse me, distinctions. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
he gave it for anyone that would receive and call on the name of the Lord and accept the blood sacrifice and follow Jesus. Let's not forget who we are. First, we are Christians, followers of Christ. We love the Jewish people. We want to see them come to know the knowledge of the truth. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We want to see the Palestinian people turn and come to Jesus. The, Jesus says that we should pray for those that persecuted us, that we bless those that curse us. Think about the James and John when they wanted to call down fire. And Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you are of. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, let's pray for Israel. Let's pray for Palestine. When I do that, I can keep my heart centered on Christ, and I can hear more clearly God's heart for these situations. Romans 15 and 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to put this verse here with Ephesians 4.23, and then I'm going to say something. Ephesians 4.23 says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It's actually referring to the attitude of the mind. And here's the point for both of these scriptures. There's a lot of people that have chosen to speak for God in this hour. Which one should I listen to? Who's right? Which vision? Which dream? Which voice? Well, I want to share these keys. The scripture says we are to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. That is the operation of the mind when it is in passive state and what is generally the disposition of the mind in that state. What is the self-talk like? If that is not been renewed and this scripture is not a popular verse you don't hear a lot of people talking about how we need to not only renew our mind but renew the fundamental spirit or the disposition or the attitude of our mind then someone that is speaking and discerning things in the spirit can be picking up things from the wrong spirit very easily is the message that you're hearing, does it have a redemptive quality to it? One of the operations of the Holy Spirit is abounding hope. We see that in Romans 15, 13. When we're listening to these voices, are we hearing the attitude of the mind, an attitude of hope, an attitude of redemption? Are we hearing doomsday? You know, doomsday message is not a new message. It's not a new message. And it appeals to the old man nature. We must look for the fruit of the spirit in the messages that we're listening to. Otherwise, maybe these scriptures don't apply. I believe they do for New Covenant believers, especially New Covenant believers that say they're speaking for God. This is important for believers. The Bible says in John 16, 13, but when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority. He will speak whatever he hears and he will tell you things that are to come. He will glorify me for he will receive from me and he will declare it to you. Jesus is saying here that the Holy Spirit is the one who leads us and guides us into all truth. He receives from Jesus and he communicates it to us. We could talk about this on many levels. But spirit-filled believer, it's the Holy Spirit's role to lead us and guide us into truth. Be encouraged. The more time you spend in the Word of God, the more time you spend meditating on the Word of God, 
praying in the Holy Spirit, these are things that will help you discern and that I help me discern what what's coming, what I'm listening to. Is this really what I need to be listening to? We ought to be the most discerning group of people on the face of the earth. All right, all right, all right. I want to remind you of this, my brother. This is good news. Let me tell you, God is still in the business of raising up kings and lowering them. It's God who puts nations into place and lowers nations. Daniel 2.21 said, it is, it is he who changes the times and the season. He removes kings and he sets up kings. He's still in this business. Read Psalm 2 as an item of homework here. Maybe we'll read it at the end and we'll pray together. How about that? I have a question about Habakkuk 2.14. Doesn't the scripture still need to happen? It says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Is this scripture been fulfilled yet? Do more research if you'd like. It seems like that's still somewhere in the plan. None of this is catching God by surprise. All the nefarious actions, none of it is surprising him. Let's talk a little bit about these voices. Who should I listen to? I bless those that God has given a responsibility to speak prophetically. I thank God for their role. They're important. The Bible says that we've been given prop, prophets, apostles, teachers, pastors, evangelists. They have a role in the body of Christ. But we need to understand something about the prophetic and the prophetic operation. There are domains or jurisdictions of authority. I might be very skilled at giving personal prophecy that has a high level of credibility and reliability and integrity. That skill does not qualify me to prophesy at a national level. And I'm not saying I have that skill. I'm making a point. There are jurisdictions of authority I mean, must not confuse someone's ability to get reliable prophetic messaging for a certain domain and translate that into another domain it doesn't work like that there is a progression of maturity and influence in the dimension of the spirit that people must go through a process and be perfected by the Lord to have certain levels of influence. The scripture says a lot in the New Testament. Go research what the scriptures has to say about prophets and the words and the responsibilities that are given. But their point is here, there is a local church and regional aspect. And this could be broken down a little differently. Then there's prophets that are prophesying into the church system. Some people might call it the church mountain. Then there might there's national level prophets and global level prophets. This is more where the office of the prophet, when we would think about someone like Elijah or Jeremiah or Isaiah. And I'm not equating New Testament prophets to Old Testament prophets. Commenters, please, that's that's not what I said. Don't hear that. What am I saying here? We need to be discerning. Someone says, oh, yeah, they did a great job of sharing prophetic words. They had people's phone numbers, and they were able to say certain things about them. That's great. I'm blessed, God, for the encouragement that came through that ministry. That does not qualify them to give a prophetic word at a national level or a global level. It doesn't. Do you love me? I love you. So, saints, we said we are going to read Psalm 2, and we're going to pray. Let's do that. As we wrap up, we really need discernment now more than ever. Just to recap here, spending time in the word of God is the number one thing you can do to ratchet up your discernment level. 
guide your ear gate and your eye gate. We have to be careful. We have to make sure what's hitting our hearts and our minds. It shouldn't be news playing in the background for hours at a time if we expect to hear God's voice. We won't hear God's voice clearly. There's too many other voices. We'll be ministering too much to the flesh and the soul. Guard against the leaven of Herod, the political spirit. It's out there. I've seen it. It's disturbing. It's not helping us. I, younger in the Lord, oh, guilty. Don't make the same mistake I made. Christ is the great unifier and the great equalizer. He died for all that would believe on him. Are the voices you're listening to, are they renewed in the spirit of their mind? Is there a redemptive edge to the messaging? Is there an edge of hope in the messaging? If there's not, I have some questions. You're listening to someone who struggled with negativity at a very high level. I went on a mission for five years to renew the spirit of my mind. I'm not where I need to be, but I'll tell you, I can pick up because I made it a diligent quest and God has changed me so I can see what I didn't see. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is the one that leads us into truth. It's actually one of the main operations of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that helps us give discernment. We'll ask the Father to increase our discernment. God still raises up kings and lowers them. The Habakkuk says that there's going to come a day where the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I'm excited. Hey, there are jurisdictions of prophetic operation. Let's be discerning. Lord, take things to the Lord. You hear something, Lord, I really need to take this to you. Are they saying, what, how do I apply this? Is this really for me? Is this something I should be listening to? Take heed to what you and I. We will take heed to what we hear. My brothers and my sisters, let's break open the book of Psalm and go to the Psalms and go to the chapter two here. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. <clears throat> now, therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Rest, blessed are all who take refuge in him. Let's pray. Father, we just pray we need discernment in this hour more than ever. All kinds of voices saying all kinds of things. Help us to guard our hearts with all diligence. Lord, we pray, Father God, we would have that, that grace like the sons of Issachar, that we would discern the times and know what Israel ought to do. I bless you. I love you. Make it a great day.